Model Engineering for Beginners, Part 21. How to machine phosphor bronze, the hard stuff. The phosphor bronze that I normally use is called leaded bronze and it's very easy to machine. But this piece of phosphor bronze in the chuck at the moment is not leaded bronze. This is very good stuff to use because it's quite hard wearing once it's machined. But therein lies the problem, machining it. You can see as I drill the first pilot hole with the centre drill that this metal is considerably different to say steel for instance. If this was a piece of steel bar it would be in the chuck running possibly more concentric than this does. I would centre drill the end and drill all the way down it. By the way I'm making a bearing sleeve. I'm using a very sharp brand new tip on my carbide tip tool and I'm applying a lot of oil to the surface. In this first part of the episode I'm showing how not to do this job. For the moment though it's looking quite good, the chippings are coming off in one continuous loop, which in itself can be a problem if these nice and swirly pretty pieces of swarf wrap themselves around the work and start flailing about all over the place. So it's always a good idea not to stand directly in the line of fire of anything stuck around the work. I always stand at the right hand side of the tool post. It's safer that way, if anything flies out from the chuck it's going to miss me. So what's the problem here? I'm getting a really nice finish, the oil's doing its job and it's not getting too hot. Lathe coolant is recommended for this job though. It's important to keep this piece of phosphor bronze cool when it's been machined. I'm making a bearing sleeve to fit inside this brass part. So here I'm just checking that the size is somewhere near. And once I find the correct size I'll machine it all the way down. I want to make this bearing sleeve a push fit in this component. But it's not too important if it doesn't work out that way because I can always fit it using some Loctite 603. But according to my micrometer this is going to be exactly the right size. So everything's looking good, what a lovely finish. I don't know what all the fuss is about. So it's time now to drill the hole down the middle. This twist drill is one imperial size under a quarter of an inch. So here we go, I've applied plenty of oil and immediately you can see that something is a bit wrong, it's suddenly getting very hot. Is the drill blunt? Well not really, maybe just a little bit. In a job like this a continuous supply of coolant would be useful. But my workshop, in common with most other hobby workshops, does not have a coolant service. Now the part's getting really hot and look what's happened. This is the strangest looking bearing sleeve I've ever seen. I parted it off and threw it in the scrap bin. Start again. Before I get lots of comments even at this early stage I am of course doing this on purpose because it is a tutorial video and I would assume in exactly the same way as I used to do things this is how a beginner would approach drilling a bearing sleeve made from phosphor bronze. If this was a piece of steel it wouldn't be a problem but I would never recommend drilling the hole all the way through to start with. This time I haven't turned the outer diameter. I centre drill the end of the work as usual and then using plenty of oil and a 3 16 of an inch diameter drill I drilled all the way through with that one first. And whenever the work started to get hot I backed off and waited for a while. I used three sizes of twist drill in total, the last one being one imperial size under a quarter of an inch. Now it's time to ream the hole down the centre of the phosphor bronze to get an accurate size and a good finish. The lathe is currently slowed down, it's in back gear and once again I'm using plenty of oil. I'm advancing the reamer positively and as you can see it's not getting very hot now but it is still getting a bit warm. For the next part of the job I'm using a live centre in the hole to keep everything in line and as previously shown I'm turning the external diameter down to 5 16 of an inch, taking light cuts and using plenty of oil. No smoke this time, it's looking much better. And finally, here's the finished bearing sleeve. I've parted it off and turned it round in the chuck and I'm machining the other end to square everything up. I remove the sharp edge with a file and here is the finished item in my hand. This end is the outermost part when it was in the lathe and oh dear, this is the inner part. The outer part wasn't brilliant but this one is way off, just look at this hole. It looks like one of the phases of the moon. Back to the drawing board, start again. I'm going to miss out the drilling part because it's quite similar to before but I centre drilled the part and using a 3 16 of an inch drill I drilled halfway through only. Once again I went up the drill sizes until I ended up with a hole one imperial size under the quarter of an inch that I eventually need. And before going any further it's time to part off the component. 
And it's apparent from this clip where I'm parting off the work that I have to go all the way through because the hole does not go all the way through the part. And now with the component reversed in the chuck, for drilling from this end I started with the centre drill followed by a 3 16 of an inch diameter drill and as before the final drilling was with a twist drill that is one imperial size under a quarter of an inch and I also used plenty of lubricating oil. Time now to ream the component all the way through. This is altogether a better way of doing it. The work is supported in the chuck and this chuck is quite accurate to say it's such an old chuck. I could have used my collet chuck for this, that would have made the part even more accurate. But this will be fine for the intended purpose of the component. And here I'm pressing the sleeve into the brass housing using the tailstock chuck. A quick word about fits, this is not a really tight fit in the brass component. But put it this way, it's not going to fall out, and when I try a quarter of an inch silver steel shaft through it, it feels really good. If the bearing sleeve was a tighter fit than this, then I would have had to re-ream it once it was fitted into the component. So it took three attempts, and it was good to do it that way for me, because that is what used to happen when I was a beginner. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.